Welcome back to Rouse Rising. I'm Katie and in today's video I am sharing with you the joys of homemaking and how to make homemaking joyful. Recently my family and I traveled around Oregon and we stayed at this magical little Airbnb that was on a farm surrounded by a beautiful bamboo forest. On this particular morning, my children were out playing with their dad while I had a little bit of time to myself to just flutter around this house and get everything put away back to what I like to call ground zero. On days like this, when I look around the house and it looks like chaos, I just need to take a little bit of time. It might be a half hour or an hour just to gather everything up and get everything put away in its place. When we're at our home, this is a activity that the whole family participates in. Every so often throughout the day, we will take a break in whatever activity we're doing or between activities and we'll say, all right, let's do a quick tidy up. And all the kids will jump in and join together to help us gather up all the things that are out of place in the home, all their toys that they're not playing with at the moment get put away, all the clothes, if there's clothes in the dryer, we do a quick fold of whatever clothing needs to be folded and put away. We'll run the vacuum once everything is picked up and once the vacuuming is done, all of the children are allowed to go back to playing like normal. We just get it back down to ground zero so that we can have a nice clean slate to continue enjoying our day. However, at this moment, we're in this little Airbnb house. It is so cute. Made me feel like we were in a little beach cottage right off the coast. It was really nice that we had a room for the children and a room for ourselves. We have the lovely kitchen back there that we were able to prepare meals for ourselves. We saved a lot of money doing that, which was really helpful and awesome for me. Uh, we've stayed in hotels before where we've had continental breakfast, and then I've been responsible for figuring out how to feed my five children breakfast or lunch and dinner rather. So here we are in an Airbnb and I have the opportunity to make meals for my family, really settle in and enjoy the space that is this farm that we are staying on. For my members only, I will be sharing more family footage, more events and things that we did while we stayed at this farm. I'll be taking you on a full tour of the farm, which includes my kids showing you around a little bit. And you can join as a member of Rouse Rising, linked down below in this video's description. I would love to have you over there. As I know you all see on my channel, I share a lot of longer form videos of meal preps and foods that we cook throughout the week. But for my members only side, we have some individual videos for recipes, so you can head over there and check out those recipes. I was looking for some words of wisdom and some inspiration for homemaking, and I came across the Homemaker's Creed from Betty Crocker, and I want to read that to you now. I believe homemaking is a noble and challenging career. I believe homemaking is an art requiring many different skills. I believe homemaking requires the best of my efforts, my abilities, and my thinking. I believe home reflects the spirit of the homemaker. I believe home should be a place of peace, joy, and contentment. I believe no task is too humble that contributes to the cleanliness, the order, the health and the well-being of the household. I believe a homemaker must be true to the highest ideals of love, loyalty, service, and religion. I believe home must be an influence for good in the neighborhood, the community, and the country. It was nice to be able to have that time to get the house sorted and organized so that the kids and I could have a smooth transition into our evening and we could just enjoy the time that we have together.
This is another homemaker's creed I came across, and the author is unknown. We believe in the sanctity of the home, the cradle of character, blessed by motherly devotion and guarded by fatherly protection. We pledge ourselves to work for the preservation and improvement of home and community life, to strive for healthier minds and bodies and better living, to promote the welfare of our boys and girls, the nation's greatest assets, to be true to God and country and of lasting service to our homes and communities. The terms homemaking and homemaker are usually used negatively and thought to be a bit old fashioned and out of date. I wanted to take a few minutes to define homemaking and explain why it's important in the 21st century. Homemaking is generally defined as the creation and management of the home, especially as a pleasant place to live. And a homemaker is someone who creates and manages that home and creates an inviting, pleasant atmosphere. Essentially, a homemaker is in charge of ensuring everything related to their home and their family is taken care of. Now, that doesn't mean it's a homemaker's responsibility to do everything. It's just their job to make sure it gets done. What does home management consist of? Cooking, cleaning, decorating, routines, family time, repairs, maintenance, laundry, and general day-to-day -day home operations. Homemaking skills are critical to the well-being of the family and the community. As modern day homemakers, we keep our homes clean, comfortable, and safe. We make them inviting places for our family and guests. A modern homemaker is someone who tends to their home, making it a comfortable environment for those who live there and for the guests who visit. This looks different from everyone. Some homemakers make their home their work, some work in their home and some outside of the home and everything in between. As a modern homemaker, it's important to have a daily schedule for all the tasks that you would like done and by when. Of course, as I mentioned before, this can be a flexible schedule, but it does give you an idea of what every day should look like. Instead of making a list in a notebook or on a random piece of paper, I came up with a homemaking planner where I can manage my home all in one spot. This giant 560 page homemaking planner has everything you need to bring peace and order to your home. It has room for large families, full page daily layouts, daily Bible verses, it has a garden planner, a pantry organizer, livestock logs, seasonal clothing pages, it has a page for your family emergency plan, monthly prayer lists, goals, book lists, and resource lists, notes for dad or substitute teacher, budgets and meal plans. It helps you to reduce decision fatigue with suggested daily chores, gift lists, and a password keeper. It has blank dates for maximum flexibility and there are enough daily layouts in this planner to last you more than one full calendar year. 490 days of blank layout pages. So you can take a peek inside and have a look at this book linked down below in this video's description. It is my homemaking planner by Rouse Rising. I hope you all take a moment to check that out and get your life organized all in one place. I know that it has been really helpful for me to keep everything. It's like a mother's diary or a homemaker's diary, a homemaker's journal. And if you are struggling with brain fog and fatigue and just mental overload <laughs> and you need help getting things down on paper and organizing your life, that is what this homemaking planner is for.
finding joy in homemaking might not always be the easiest thing. Sometimes life can just get to be all a bit too much. So when you are getting bogged down in your homemaking routine, take some time to implement some of these tips for boosting your mind and body. Prepare what you can the night before. Begin your day right. Practice gratitude. Admit the struggle is real. Put on some tunes. And don't try to do all the things. You gotta laugh a little, get outside, and move your body. Don't be miserable in your homemaking. Learn how to be a joyful homemaker. Learn how to find joy and gratefulness for the things that envelop you in your home, for the things that surround you. Most importantly, the people that live in your home with you. Sometimes being a joyful homemaker is simply an attitude adjustment for me. Sometimes I just need to list some things I am grateful for, or I just need to put on some music to get some work done. Other days I need to go for a walk, step outside, take a deep breath, or do something goofy with my kids just to get laughing so that I can have a chemical or a hormone boost. Sometimes we just need that. A wife of noble character who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hands, she holds the distaff and grasps of the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for all of them are clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat amongst the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also as he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her the reward she has earned and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. If ever you find yourself having one of those days, you know, the ones where you wake up grouchy, irritable, and just plain lacking joy. As a young mom, I had those days all too often. They were frequent and they were long days at home. The demand of motherhood, the endless to-do list, a house that never stays clean, lack of sleep from needy children, never having a quiet moment to myself, these moments can add up and quickly drain us. They can rob us of joy, but they don't have to. Finding joy in the ordinary days of homemaking is attainable. There are a few simple ways I have found to keep my heart and my attitude joyful and content when it comes to embracing and thriving in my role of a wife, mother, and creative home keeper. I find joy in the early morning hours, like on this day when I'm spending time cleaning. This is after breakfast and after the morning rush. How we start our day usually dictates how well our day will go. I have a choice to make in the mornings when it comes to fostering a joyful spirit. The choice isn't always an easy one, but using my mornings will help transform my heart for the day. 
let's be honest for a minute, shall we? Cleaning is no fun. It just isn't, especially when you live in an active house with growing children. The house does not stay clean for long. Just because it isn't fun doesn't mean we don't have to do it. We do. Part of the role as the keeper of our home involves tasks that are often mundane. While they aren't necessarily the most fun things to do, I found a few simple disciplines that have helped me to enjoy doing them and also look forward to do them. One of the things I like to do when I'm tidying up in the morning is to pray over my home. And I mean pray over the specific rooms and the people who live there. Instead of having a bitter attitude or negative feelings while cleaning, I've learned from previous experiences that my thoughts tend to go south when I'm cleaning. I use this time in a more meaningful way. Praying over my home is something that has not only changed my heart, but has also changed the entire atmosphere of my home. Take a few moments to pray over the room while you're cleaning. Pray for the activities that happen in the room for your specific family members. For example, we are having some serious potty training going on, and that has something that has sparked a lot of joy and sometimes not so much joy when there's accidents. So while I'm tidying up in the bathroom, I'm praying for that specific child and the whole potty training experience. And I'm happy to say that at this point in time, our two-year-old is officially potty trained. Another way that I keep joy in the homemaking tasks, especially the mundane ones, is I like to listen to something inspirational. Just like in the morning when I like to turn on soft and gentle music, I also like to listen to podcasts while I'm working around the house. There are so many wonderful podcasts to listen to that offer plenty of inspiration. Late afternoons is when my energy level is severely lacking. I'm tired after a long day, and sometimes the very last thing I want to do is make dinner. To keep me motivated, I listen to a podcast I have been saving. Filling my cup by listening to the encouraging words of others can do wonders for my tired and weary soul. It helps to restore the joy and the vision for my role at home. Have a plan. I like my to-do lists. I thrive off of them because they help me plan for my day. I've learned that I can't have a super long to-do list though, thanks to my days of chasing after five kids. I know I usually can only realistically check off about a handful of things. So every night before I go to bed, I write out a simple to-do list and a flexible timeline for the next day. I know it sounds rigid, but there's freedom in having a plan. I'm more intentional with my time with my kids and they know what to expect during the day and it keeps our day moving. The days when I don't make a plan are usually riddled with chaos. <laughs> I find myself slumped on the couch mid-morning while my children are fighting with one another. It's defeating, but when I have a simple plan of attack for the day, the whole day just goes by a little bit smoother. We also need to create room for fun. Often when we are lacking joy around the home, it's because we haven't created any room for fun. When was the last time you got on the floor and rolled around with your kids or played a game together as a family? There's always work to be done around a home, but if we don't stop to enjoy the moments every single day, we are quickly setting ourselves up to be frazzled, overwhelmed, and lacking joy. Making a list can be a blessing, but don't let it be a curse too. Don't let it be the mountain you are willing to die on. Frantically running around trying to complete every single thing on your to-do list while ignoring your family. It doesn't measure success. I know because I have spent many of the past years just working my tail off, but I was missing out on the moments that were most important. Everything that I was so busy doing doesn't measure success. Sometimes putting aside your to-do list so you can pull out the Play-Doh and play with your kids is the thing that needs to be done the most. Sitting down next to them, looking into their faces, giving them your attention and laughing with them on a regular basis is what will bring joy back into your home. And don't forget about your husband either. Make time for fun with him, whether that be an in-home date, a date night or a time when you two get out of the house, but plan some time to create room for fun with him too. I would love to hear from you all in the comments down below. What are ways that you find joy in your ordinary days? What are ways that you make your mundane homemaking tasks a little bit easier to complete, a little bit more joyful to complete? 
I'd love to hear from you all. This has been a long journey for me. I became the matriarch of my family at 20 years old when my mother passed. And that was a burden at the time that I was not ready to carry. But here I am now, 20 years later, and that burden has become my joy, my honor, and my privilege to carry. And I hope that you feel the same when you look at your life as a homemaker and your role for your family and your community. I hope that you feel fulfilled and that you feel joyful that your purpose is bringing so much love to those around you. It truly is. It may not seem like your small children appreciate every single thing that you do. It may not seem like your husband appreciates that it took you 15 minutes to wipe the smudges off the stainless steel trash can. <laughs> but know that those tasks and that what you are doing is setting your family up for success. You are providing an environment that is enriching your family's lives. It is giving them the space to expand their minds and to practice the things in life that bring them joy. Those are things that we can focus on in life when we have a clear space to think freely and openly about life and about what needs to be done. We need to be diligent in our tasks and make sure that we are being productive in our tasks so that we have the time to enjoy our life. There's always gonna be work in every single day, but how we view that work and how we approach that work is what really is gonna set us up for emotional well-being and contentment in our life. After work, there is always time to rest and to rejuvenate and to enjoy life. A hard day's work feels so good. I always feel accomplished when I get some tasks done around the home. And when I'm able to rest my soul, to rest myself and to take in my surroundings and be at peace, that's what I'm aiming for these days is just to live a more purposeful and more peaceful life, creating an environment for my family where we can all coexist together and get along. Thank you for being here today. I will see you in the next video.